This is a Retro Cranbrook special presentation. Hi, I'm Sandy Saver. I'm Superintendent of Employee Relations for Cominco and Kimberly. And I'm asked to make comment on the dinner we're having. I guess I'd like to say that, uh, first of all, we've been running since 1909, and uh, December 21st of this year is the last day we'll be operating. And in honor of all the people that have worked here over the years, we wanted to have a nice, uh, fairly intimate dinner for just the employees that have been on roll this last year since uh, January 1st this year and that's 600 some odd employees and their and their spouses or guests. We'd like to have invited everybody that's ever worked here but the logistics of that are just impossible. Uh, we have roughly a thousand people at the dinner right now tonight and we're having a good dinner. The Ski Hill's catering that and the the couple good local bands and we're just having a whole bunch of people here hopefully to have a great time and remember the mine and maybe more in its passing and in the meantime we've just had a, a multitude of people organize this and put it together and I'd just like to thank everybody for all the wonderful efforts they put in. We've very deliberately tried to keep media and other ceremonies down to a minimum so everybody can kind of come in here, let loose, enjoy themselves and put the place to bed with some class. Sandy, it's, it's going to be a quite an emotional event uh, with the Kamiko closing and, and probably very emotional this evening as well. I suspect there'll be some emotion, although, you know, I think most people have been well re prepared for this. They've known at least since 1995, probably a lot earlier than that, that it's coming down. Uh, we've got a transition office here, an employee family assistance program, and I think particularly the transition office has done a tremendous job in starting to get people ready for the closure, and people are starting to find jobs. We've had all kinds of good support from employers coming forth and more all the time, and I think a good number of people are ready to make the leap to other employment, and some a good number of people are going to retire. We have 437 people on roll right now. Uh, roughly 110 of those people are eligible for some form of retirement. The other 330 some odd people are, are going to be looking for work, but I would say a good third of those people are already in positions where they know where they're going after closure, they've got jobs, and the remainder I think will have a pretty good success. So. I'm, I'm not sure we've addressed it. Uh, who is actually eligible to come to this uh, dinner tonight? We have set the invitation list that the 600 and some odd, 600 people that were on roll January 1st this year are all eligible to come, and each one of those people is eligible to bring a guest. And what we have here is we've had a response rate of just under a thousand people. So. Anything else that you might want to say about the Kamiko closing, Sandy? Uh, you know, we're both from Kimberley, and uh, you know, this is a very sad occasion for me too. Well, I guess. Sad is one way to look at it. I would honestly say that we've had just not only these 600 people on roll contribute, but we've had thousands of people contribute and the families have contributed to the success of the Sullivan. And in turn, the Sullivan has contributed to the success of those people and their families and uh, made a wonderful community in Kimberley. And I think that Kimberley is going to go on and these people are all going to go on and enjoy a wonderful degree of success in their life and their future endeavors. And I, I think. If anything, the Kimberley people have demonstrated that they're really resilient and resourceful people, and I think they're going to make the best of this. So. And, and I think it's fitting that the, the Last Supper, as they might call it, uh, is being held in the building that Minko helped pay for. 
Yeah, I think that's wonder that's a wonderful symbol of uh, I guess the how the community has been interwoven and I think it'll just all work out for the very best here. Thanks a lot, Mike. Thank you, Stan. Uh, Jim, thousand seat dinner in the arena in Kimberley. Uh, it's getting very close to the, uh, the shutdown of Kaminko. Yeah, well, as you're aware, the mine is closing in this December of this year, and there are just over 400 people working there at this present time, and uh, it's very, very significant event uh, in terms of, of the community of Kimberley, because not only do we lose the 400 jobs uh, which are associated with the mine, but we lose the tax base that's associated with the, with the mine as well. And, you know, just as an example, what happens here is that the municipality will face a significant loss in revenue. In next uh, this particular year here, 2001, uh, the tax revenue from the mine is the is 2.6 million dollars. Next year it will drop to 500,000, and by the year of 2003, it will be down to 100,000 because of the fact that uh, once the mine closes, the property goes into a different category, and and so the taxes are significantly reduced. So. We have, uh, we have two major problems to deal with in this community. Firstly, the loss of jobs, and secondly, how are we going to adjust to, to that much less in our, our municipal revenues? And, uh, and of course, uh, uh, we've had in place a, a, a plan for a transition, but uh, the best laid plans often go awry, and some of the events uh, that have occurred recently uh, have put us a little bit behind in terms of, of the the plan, but uh, nonetheless, uh, it, it is happening. There's a lot of apprehension in the town, uh, and a lot of uh, concern uh, for the future. And I think uh, this particular event that's being hosted tonight by Kaminko is uh, is really an effort to uh, to have the employees uh, get together one last time uh, as a group, and uh, and to. Uh, uh, <clears throat> deal with uh, a little bit more with the transition issues and uh, and you know it's it's more or less a an effort to uh, to make the transmission a, a transition a little bit smoother it, it's it's really uh, a sad day for Kimberly isn't it uh, to see this happen we, and we knew it was coming but it's, it still doesn't alter the fact that it is it's going to be a sad event when it does take place Oh, it is a very sad day. The mine has been here for over a hundred years. Uh, we've uh, had many opportunities or tried uh, many times to bring other industry to the community. This last ten years though has been especially difficult to bring new industry uh, into anywhere in British Columbia. Uh, one of the difficulties of course is that we're so close to Alberta and we have to compete with them. And the other was just the investment climate in the province in general. So it's been very, very difficult. To, uh, to attract new industry. But we have made some significant gains in the tourism industry. And, uh, you know, in the last two years, we've had approximately 25 million a year invested in the tourism industry. And uh, uh, there's a <coughs> hope that we will see much more investment in the future. However, that, uh, that uh, developments uh, have slowed down a little because of financial difficulties of the resorts of the Canadian Rockies. Those financial difficulties are over, but we've had about a year and a half here now where the investment has slowed down quite a bit. We're hoping and praying that the, uh, the, the level of investment will pick up in the future, and uh, every indication are that it will, but uh, that doesn't help us in the short term. You are hopeful for the future. I mean, with uh, there is a lot of doom and gloom, but there, you are hopeful uh, something good is going to be coming out of it for the residents of Kimberley. Well, I think that, uh, you know, we've worked very, very hard in our community, I'd say, to, to develop a, a new economy, uh, and, and we've been partially successful. I think given time, uh, we will be uh, more successful, especially when uh, it's realized by the investment community that the town isn't going to dry up and blow away when Kaminko falls. It's a very difficult time, though. I don't want to, to minimize uh, the impact. Uh, of the mine closing because it's very significant. A lot of uh, good paying uh, jobs are gone or, or will be gone and you know the the uh, security that has been there because the mine has been here for so long uh, again that will disappear so uh, you know it is a difficult time but I think given a little help from 
federal and provincial governments and, uh, and others uh, working to establish a new economy that we can in the long term be successful. At around noon, where uh, the last crew is going to come out of the Sullivan mine, um, we're going to have uh, not a big ceremony, but uh, we, we want to pay our respects to the people who have worked here over the years, not just the present employees, uh, but the, uh, the thousands and thousands who have worked in this mine over the years. So we've asked the uh, Kimberly Pipe Man to come up and pipe the last crew out. Um, there will be a few people around, uh, the mayor, I think, and uh, MLA, some dignitaries. Uh, the mines department is going to be well represented. Um, we just uh, want to, you know, pay our respects to the people, say thank you. Um, it's a world-class ore body, but the people who have worked here are world-class people, people, too. too. Before you leave, please subscribe to our channel. It will not only help you stay up to date with our videos, it will also be a nice way to show your support for the volunteers who make this project possible. Thanks for watching, and please tune in again.